Hi, gang. How you doing? My name is Harmony Hart. Come on, let's sing along. Open up all of the doors, my friend. You've got all the keys. Open up all of the doors, my friend. Come fun learning with me. Come fun learning with me. Yes, welcome to Fun Learning. Today, we're going to have a good time and learn about addition. We're also going to learn about subtraction. We're going to learn about multiplication. And you guessed it, division. Oh, also about metrics. So, come fun learning with me. Second, will you kids? I'd like to throw a little light on what's about to happen here. <laughs> Would you giraffes, I mean you lamps, please move out of the way and could the bunnies come back on? I know. This is the beginning of an animal story. No, not at all. This is a mathematics film. It's about addition. Addition? What's addition? Addition must be about bunnies. <laughs> not exactly. But I'm going to begin with these bunnies to show you about addition. Could you bunnies manage to line up? I said, could you bunnies please get yourselves together? We want to do some mathematics here. That's better. Now, kids, here we have some furry monsters. Uh, I mean some cuddly bunnies. How many are there all together? One, two, three, four, five. There are five all together. Right. You counted the bunnies and got five all together. Now, as we go on, you'll find that addition is a way to put one group together with another group. Very good, bunnies. You can go now. Okay, little furry friends, don't get carried away. You did a good job. Just move on out now a little more rapidly. <laughs> uh, rapidly. I'm beginning to think this is a film about animals myself. Would you lambs please behave? You're as bad as the bunnies. Okay, kids, now we're going to find out how many lambs we have here. Tell me how many lambs in the first group. One, two, three. Three lamps. And how many lamps in the second group? One, two, two lamps. Now, if we put both groups together, how many lamps are there all together? One, two, three, four, five. There are five lamps all together. Right. We say that there are three lamps in the first group and two lamps in the second group. If we put both groups together, then we get five lamps all together. Okay, lamps, you've shed some light on the subject. You can go now. Bye. Don't forget to turn off the lights. Wow, what's happening? Neat, look at that. Let's get some boats out in this lake and do some more addition. So again, we have two groups. I know, two boats in the first group and three boats in the second group. Or five boats all together. Good. You sailed right through that. Sailed right through it. <laughs> so, it's the same as with the lamps. There are two boats in the first group and three boats in the second group. If we put both groups together, we get five boats. Now, that's addition. Two put together with three is the same as five. You boats can ship out now. You two water. <laughs> and can we have the roller skates glide in? How many are there? Two in the first group and three in the second group. How many are there all together? Two skates put together with three skates make five skates. Right. Hey, what's going on? We're just rolling along. Rolling <laughs> along. <laughs> Don't worry, none of them are leaving. Now, how many in the first group? Three. How many in the second group? Two. And how many all together? Five, there's still five. Right again. One group of three skates Put together with a group of two skates, make one large group of five skates all together. They both equal five. So you see, it doesn't matter in what order you add the number of objects in the groups. Two put together with three, or three put together with two. They still equal five. 
Okay, you guys can roll out now. Let's try it with another group. Wow, look at them all. And here comes more. What's happening here? The same thing as before. We're going to do some more addition. Okay, pilots, cut your engines. See, the helicopters are in two groups. How many in the first group? One, two, three. How many in the second group? One, two, three, four. How many all together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven helicopters all together. Okay. Now we have three in the first group and four in the second group. This makes seven all together. One of the choppers is moving from one group to another. Well, now the groups have changed a little bit. What do you see now? I know, I know. Four helicopters put together with three helicopters also make seven helicopters. That's right. Now we're buzzing along. Are there other ways to group them? Now remember, the helicopters are just moving around into different groups. Okay, you choppers, cut it. Now, kids, let's do some more addition. Before we put them together, how many in the first group? One, two, three, four, five. Five in the first group. And one, two in the second group. And can you add them together? Sure. Um, five put together with two makes seven. That's terrific. I think you've got it. And, of course, if the groups change places... Simple. Two helicopters put together with five makes seven. Very good. Now that we've been looking at different groups that add up to seven, can you think of another way of grouping the helicopters and still get seven? I think so. Can there be just one in a group? Sure. How about one helicopter by itself on one side and all the rest on the other side? Okay. Did you get that, pilots? So we have one in the first group and one, two, three, four, five, six, six in the second group. So one put together with six makes seven. That's right. And... If they change places, then we have six put together with one making seven. Let's restate the idea in a mathematical sentence. We can say that six plus one equals seven. Plus means to add, and we use this sign to represent addition. <coughs> equals means the same as. And equals is written like this. So the mathematical sentence looks like this. Wow, how about that? Before we finish, I want to show you one last grouping. All seven helicopters are on one side in one group, and let's say on the other side there are no helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, how would you add that? Uh, seven plus zero equals seven? <laughs> no, don't laugh, that's right. <laughs> And if we move all seven helicopters over to the other side... Don't bother. We know. Zero plus seven equals seven. Now let's take one last look at all the groups that add up to seven. You can see that there are lots of ways to group seven objects. And that's addition. You may want to try grouping the same way. Well, pilots, you can start your engines. Okay, buzz off. Move on out. We're all through now. Hey, you guys, scat. A page of your carrots. This film is over. Would you guys get out of here? Would you please leave? Come on, guys. Whoa! Okay, all the bunnies off now. Thank you. Lamps off. Thank you. All the bunnies off. Thank you. We got another film coming up. These are all the people that worked on that one. That was addition. This next one we've got is subtraction. Uh, please, Mr. Bunny, would you please? Thank you. Here comes subtraction. <laughs> I know it looks that way, but this is a mathematics film. It's about subtraction. Subtraction? Yes. We're going to use all this food to bite into the subject of subtraction. You know, of course, that addition is about putting things together. For instance, two put together with three makes five. Now, let's look at how subtraction works. Could the hot dogs come in? 
Hey, hold it, will you? No, I didn't mean hold the mustard. I meant hold that silly barking. Okay, how many hot dogs do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Five hot dogs. And let's say that we take away two. One, two. Then how many are left? One, two, three. There are three left. Right. So we can say that if you start with five and take away two, that leaves three. There are three hot dogs left. Five take away two leaves three. Anyone want these hot dogs? No. Okay. We're through with you, hot dogs. Now, how many eggs do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six eggs. Yeah, six eggs. Okay. Now, let's take away two again. One, two. And how many are left? One, two, three, four. There are four left. So, we can say that six take away two leaves four. Let's state this as a mathematical sentence. Take away is written with a little line like this. It's called a minus sign. It simply means take away. Now, can you read what it says there? Six take away two equals four. Right, or six minus two equals four. Okay, we're through with you other four eggs. You can slide off now. Could you red apples please get yourselves into a group on one side? Not on your sides, on one side of the screen. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, kids, how many apples do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven apples. Okay, take away one apple. I just said take it away, not take it away and eat it. Okay, we have seven apples and we take away one. How many apples are left? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six apples left. So how would we say that? Seven take away one leaves six. Or? I know. Seven minus one equals six. Aptly put. <laughs> <laughs> Aptly put. And of course, you know this is how we write it as a mathematical sentence. Okay. Since that apple was so good, let's take away another apple. So now we've taken two away. That leaves how many? One, two, three, four, five. Then seven take away two is five. Or seven minus two equals five. That's terrific. You're doing subtraction. Now let's see if you can continue on with the apples. Well, we could take away another apple. Okay, you work it out. Well, we have seven apples and we take away three apples. So seven minus three is one, two, three, four. Four apples left. And how do we write that? Seven minus three equals four. That's right. And of course you can see that there are other numbers of apples you can take away from seven. Let's go back to where we had seven apples all together. Look at that apple. <laughs> it's being uneaten. Okay, we know we have seven apples here. Let's not take any away. What would you say about that? Hmm, well, nothing would happen. But how would you write it? Seven take away zero... Equals seven. Right. Now let's take away all seven. Hey, they're all being eaten. So we started with seven, we took away all seven. We're left with... <laughs> Nine. None. Zero. And how would you write it? Seven minus seven equals zero. Very good. It sure looks like we're through with those apples. You can say that again. It sure looks like... No, we're... <laughs> I just meant you're right. You apple cores can go now. <laughs> now, let's do some more subtraction. But this time, let's find out how many were taken away instead of how many are left. How many cupcakes do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine cupcakes all together. And let's say that someone comes in and eats some of the cupcakes. 
How many cupcakes do we have left? One, two, three, four, five. We have five cupcakes left. How many were eaten or how many were taken away? How are we going to find the answer? I know, just count the empty wrappers. Then we'll know how many were eaten. One, two, three, four. There are four empty wrappers. Four cupcakes were eaten. So, nine minus four equals? Five. That's right. Nine cupcakes minus the four that were eaten means five or less. Uh, could you please clean up that mess? Thank you. Again, let's do another problem. Now, how many ice cream bars do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, we have ten ice cream bars. We better hurry or they'll melt. No, <laughs> these can't melt. Okay, just like with the cupcakes, let's say that someone comes in and eats some of the ice cream bars. Wow, we look at that. Boy, they eat fast. Now, how many ice cream bars do we have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We still have seven ice cream bars. And we want to find out how many were eaten. So, how do we do it? I know. We'll count the sticks left over. There are one, two, three. Three sticks left over. So, ten minus three equals seven. Well, there you have it. That's subtraction. It's about taking things away and finding out how many are left. Gang, welcome to multiplication. Yeah, I gotta get out of here because here comes a VW. What's going on here? Yeah, what? Attention, people and things. This is a mathematics film. It's about multiplication. I don't understand. What's multiplication? Yeah. Multiplication is one way to describe objects you see every day. Want to see how it all works? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Neat. Okay, cut your engines, please. Quiet. Now look closely at these cars. See how they're arranged? They're arranged in order. How many rows of cars do you see? One. How many cars are in the row? One, two, three, Four. Very good. Now, would my friends, the soft drink bottles, pop over here? Ooh. Get it? Pop over? Pop over. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Look at these. Thank you. My cap's off to you. My cap. My cap's off to you. <laughs> okay, come on now. Let's describe what we see here. These two rows form an array. Count the rows. One row, two rows. How many bottles in a row? One, two, three. Three bottles in the first row. And one, two, three bottles in the second row. How many bottles all together? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's correct. Three in one row and three in the other row are six all together. Three plus three equals six. We can also say two threes equals six. Two rows of three bottles in a row equals six bottles all together. This idea is what we call multiplication. Thank you, Bottles. You've shown us an interesting connection between addition and multiplication. Now, perhaps my hard-boiled buddies would help. Hard-boiled. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Let's take a look at this egg carton. Uh? It will help you to understand what I just explained. This is also an array. Now, again, let's count the rows. One row, two rows. And how many eggs are in each row? One, two, three, four, five, six eggs. Can you remember the idea we learned from the bottles? Oh, yes. Two rows of six in a row equals, let's see, 12 all together. Yes, 12 all together. Two sixes equals 12. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's awful. Awesome. Congratulations, you've unscrambled the first step to multiplication. Now we can go on to the second step. Now, here's some help from some friends who are always under my feet. 
a pair of socks, or we can say a set of socks. Thank you. Wow, here comes more. Look at them. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, what? How many sets of socks are there? Four. How many are in each set or pair of socks? Two. There are two socks in each set. How many socks all together? Uh, four sets. Two in each set. Yeah, that's four twos. Four sets of two equal eight. There are eight socks all together. That's the way to sock it to me. That's the way to sock it to me. <laughs> You're funny. You've got this idea. Thank you, friends. That's all for now. Shoo! Now, let's do one more set to jar our memories. Okay, watch this. Wow, look at that. Did you see what I saw? Sure. They're going to help me make a point. There are four jars with five pencils in each. You can think of each jar as a set. Four sets of five equals 20 altogether. <laughs> I think this is fun. I do, too. Yeah. Yeah, this is fun. Now, we've talked about arrays, and we talked about sets. Would the cars come back on, please? I didn't mean back in, I meant back on. Oh, boy. Now, let's look at how an array can change itself around and still have the same number of things in it. Look at those cars lining up. They formed an array, just like the eggs in the egg carton. Remember? Two rows, six in each row. Twelve all together. Hey, where are they going now? Yeah, where? Don't worry, none of them are leaving. They're just moving into a different position to drive home another point. <laughs> drive home another drive point. Drive home. Oh, wow. Come on. See, before they were in rows of six. Now they're in six rows of two in a row. But there are still 12 all together. So you can see, not only the two rows of six is 12, but also six twos equal 12. That's right. Yeah. There are lots of ways they can be rearranged. Wow. Boy, now they're in three rows with four cars in each row. Yeah. And of course, you know from before how many there are all together. Yep. Sure. So what would you say about this array? That three rows of four equals 12. Right. Right. Let's restate the idea in a sentence. That was a sentence. No. <laughs> I mean a mathematical sentence. Around our house, we say that three times four equals 12. Times means to multiply, and we use an X to represent multiplication. Now, if three times four equals 12, we can also say... I know, I know. It's the same as four rows of three or four threes. Yeah, or it would be four times three equals 12. Right. Four times three equals 12 is the same as three times four equals 12. Well, now you've got it. That's multiplication. I told you this was a mathematics film. Thanks for being such a good audience. And a special thanks to all my friends who helped me. <laughs> hey, those are my songs. Hey, come back here. Wait a minute. Song, hey, song. How you holding up? That was multiplication. Now it's time for division. Uh-oh, here comes walking shoes. <laughs> this isn't a ball game. It's a mathematics film. It's about division. A mathematics film about division? What's division? Let's use some of these objects to find out about division. Uh, could the crowd quiet down? And could you rowdy balls roll on out of here? Could we have the shoes walk on in? All right, we have ten shoes here. Let's just count them to make sure none of them have walked off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
ten. Okay, like I said, we have ten shoes. None of them have walked off. <laughs> now, as you can imagine, we want to put these ten shoes into pairs. A pair is two things that go together, like a pair of shoes. Let's see how many pairs we have. Could two of you shoes walk over together? Good. Now another two. That's right, shoes. Keep going until you're all in pairs. None left over. Wonderful. <laughs> now that all the shoes are grouped in pairs, how many pairs are there? One, two, three, four, five. There are five pairs of shoes, or five pairs of two shoes. Right. So ten shoes grouped into pairs of two equals five pairs. Oh. Another way of saying group into pairs is to say divided into groups of twos. The symbol for divided is this. Now, how's this written as a mathematical sentence? Ten divided by two equals five. Okay, shoes, we're going to give you the boot. <laughs> you can walk out now, get at the boot. I said the boot. <laughs> Chairs? Well, in a way, actually, we're going to use these chairs and tables to do another division problem. We have 13 chairs here, and we can put a group of four chairs at each table. So let's put the chairs in groups of four at a table and see how many tables we fill. Wow! <laughs> Is that neat? There they go again. Now, how many groups of four did we make from the 13 chairs? Three groups. Correct. 13 chairs are put into groups of four, and we get three groups. Now, how would we write that as a mathematical sentence? Let's see. 13 divided by four equals three. That's right. So far. Yeah, but what about that remaining chair? Good question. I was just getting to that. When you do division, things don't always come out even. Sometimes there's something left over. We call it the remainder and write it like this. 13 divided by 4 equals 3 with a remainder of 1. Okay, you furniture can go take a break. <laughs> Before, we knew how many were in each set, and we had to find out how many sets. Now let's do some division where we know how many sets there are, and then have to find out how many in each set. For instance, let's say each set is a team of balls. We want two teams, and we want to find out how many balls on a team. There are 12 balls out there. Okay, you balls, group yourselves into two teams. Are they great? Look at them go! Now the balls have grouped themselves into two teams or two sets. And how many are in each set? One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six balls in the first set. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Six balls in the second set. Right. There are six balls on each team, or in each set. Now, how would you write that as a mathematical sentence? Let's see. We started with 12 balls divided by 2 equals 6 balls. Right. 12 divided by 2 equals 6. That's right. You really bounced out that answer. And I'll bounce it right back <laughs> to you. <laughs> and there weren't any balls left over. We could even say remainder zero. Well, it was fun playing ball with you guys. <laughs> yeah, way to go. Okay, yeah, okay. Good going. Hey, we're through with you guys now. Now, here we have a pack or deck of 25 cards. Let's pretend we have three players. So deal the deck out into three equal sets and find out how many cards in each set. That sure was a fast deal. <laughs> now let's see how many cards per set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cards in each hand or each set. You didn't use them all. There's one left over. Right. 
So we had 25 cards, and we put them in three sets of eight cards per set, with one left over. So how would we write the division sentence? Uh, 25 divided by 3. I know. Wait, 25 divided by 3 equals 8, with the remainder of 1. That's right. Should we try some more? Yeah, this is fun. Okay, back into the deck, cards. <laughs> Let's say that two more people join the game, and that there are five players this time. We want to deal the cards into five sets. And now what would you say about this? Well, there are one, two, three, four, five, five cards in each hand, or each set. And how would we write that? Let's see. 25 divided by 5 equals 5, uh, remainder zero. That's terrific. Let's send the cards back and try one last game. <laughs> this time we have seven players. There's seven sets and only one, two, three cards in a set. And there's one, two, three, four, four cards remaining. So the division sentence is 25 divided by 7 equals 3. Remainder 4. Well, now you've got it. That's division. You really deserve a big hand. <laughs> big hand. <laughs> That's it for division. Here comes metrics. Oh no, not the shoes! room things take up. You want to learn too? We'll learn later. We have to get ready for our party. See you later. I'm so glad Pat and Pam invited me. I love birthday parties. I'm going to give Pat and Pam my whole pile of colored beans. But what shall I put them in? In this little bottle? That's not enough space for all these beans. This box has lots of room in it. Actually, there's too much space in this box. The beans don't take up that much room. This should have just the right amount of room for these beans. Ah, oh, good. The box is full. The space in this box is just enough space to hold all these beans. I hope they like my beans. I wish we had some new glasses for our party. When you compare them, you can see that each one of these glasses holds a different amount. This one holds less than most of the others. This little one hasn't much space inside it. It holds least of all. This one has a lot of space inside it. It holds more. This is the biggest glass here. Compared to the others, this glass holds the most. At my parties, glasses are all the same. Glasses that are the same size have the same capacity. What did you say? I was talking about how much things hold, and I said capacity. 
I thought you said capacity. Excuse me, but we heard you say capacity. We know that the capacity of this glass is more than the capacity of this one. But we'd like to know how much more. How do you measure capacity? I'm very sorry, but you'll have to ask someone else. Perhaps you can ask those new young people. Have a good day. Activity three, compare the capacity of the big container with the capacity of the little container. Choose any small container to use as a unit of measuring. We're doing that one. Did you mark the level of each cup? Yes, we did. The little container holds two units, and the large container holds four units. See, to measure, you compare how many units. Oh, that's not so hard. Now we can use very small glass and compare all our glasses. Now we'd better not forget to order the lemonade. Oh, goody. Every party in town will serve our lemonade now that we have finished our new root beer and lemonade factory. I'll read our secret recipe while you and Boris mix the ingredients. You ready, Boris? Boris ready. Ten bottles of fresh spring water. Ten bottles of fresh spring water. Three bottles of lemon juice. Three bottles of lemon juice. And one bottle of sugar. And a one a bottle of sugar. Let's taste it. Okay. It should be great. Ooh, yeah, so, so sour. sour. We put in just what you said. Let's look at the bottles. Water, lemon, sugar. Well, that's right. Wait a minute. I'll bet when you measure, you should use bottles the same size. Boris, put in some more water and sugar while I answer the phone. Boris put... Root beer and lemonade factory? We'd like three bottles of your most delicious lemonade for our party Saturday. Yes, sir. Three bottles of our delicious lemonade for your party Saturday. They'll be there, sir. Anybody like some leftover lemonade? What are you doing with all that lemonade? We ordered three bottles of lemonade for our party, and look what they sent. Did you get three bottles? But look how much they hold. How much does a bottle hold? Okay, okay. It depends on which bottle. They make all sizes. Sure, you're thinking of one capacity. And they were sure thinking of a bigger one. But that couldn't happen if you or the lemonade company knew about a liter. What's a liter? A liter is this much space, whether it's full. A liter. Or empty. And these are all one liter, a little more than this milk carton. The space can be any shape, but it still has a capacity of one liter. Ah, if we had ordered our lemonade by the liter, no problem. Right. So here's a liter measure to remind you. I think we should get some liter bottles. We're going to open a lemonade stand and sell our lemonade. What's that noise? It's some kids, boss. They're building a lemonade stand right outside our chocolate fudge factory. I'm thirsty. Can I go get some? In a minute. How much are they selling it for? 30 cents a liter. Hey, boss, how come we don't measure our chocolate fudge by the liter? It takes up space, too. Well, it's like this. Space, like in this bowl, we can fill and empty. 
we call that space capacity. But when space is filled up by something solid, like our blocks of chocolate fudge, then we talk about volume. Got that? Maybe I got it. If I want to measure this bowl that's empty, or this bowl that's full, then I'm measuring capacity. But when I want to measure how much space is taken up by these solid blocks of delicious chocolate fudge, then I'm measuring volume. Right. Both times you are measuring space. But this is capacity, and this is volume. Now you can get some lemonade. But I have one more question, boss. When you have a big volume, like this, what kind of units do you measure it with? In the fudge business, that's easy to answer. To measure volume, you divide the filled up space into cubes, like we divide up our fudge. Presto! Cubic units. To find the volume, divide it into little cubes and count them. Sure. This big block of chocolate fudge has a volume of 24 cubic units. The big box we pack them in has a volume of 10 cubic units. I like cubic units. Look at all the shapes I can make that have a volume of 24 cubic units. I think it's time for your lemonade break. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Some cool lemonade? Uh, yes, please. How much lemonade would you like? We have glasses of different capacity. Ooh, I'm very thirsty. I'd like the big one. If you like it, sir, we have this bottle with the capacity of a whole liter. You may like to take a liter of lemonade home with you. Mmm, it's delicious. I would like a liter to take home. Here you are. Thank, Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is very good lemonade. And you know what? After I drink the lemonade, I'll have this fine bottle that holds exactly one liter, the standard unit for measuring capacity. I'll be able to measure the capacity of all kinds of things. Big bottles, dish pans, Wash basins? <laughs> it will be fun. Why don't you find a liter bottle and measure capacity, too? Well, gang, I hope you had a good time, and I hope you learned something, too, about addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and metrics. Come back and see me again for some more fun learning, and remember, treat other people the way you want to be treated. Time for Astro Projections!